Hello Interwebs, welcome to Let's Fix Computers. I've got a MacBook Air here that does not turn on and has no green light on the charger. So I'm expecting a fairly fundamental problem with this one. Um, no green light on the charger in infers that there is an issue with the power rail to the SMC or the SMC itself. Um, so the power rail would be PP3V42. Um, which is the first rail to come on in a uh, MacBook. It's the one that switches on, powers the SMC, which in turn brings everything else on. So if we don't have PP3v42, we got nothing. So let's take the back cover off of this, take a closer look and see what we find. Okay, we've got some signs of liquid damage in here. We've got some stains on the cooling fan and on the back here you can see we've got some tide marks uh, around where the fan is there so that matches up. Uh, not a lot going on, there's a little bit of tide mark around this side as well. Let's unplug the battery. Now PP3V42 is generated here in this section and there's no visual damage here, but the last time I was dealing with a fault with PP3V42, we actually had a shorted capacitor underneath that little blob of um, stuff. So uh, if maybe I'm lucky and we've got the same deal there. Some more staining around there. Nothing super visually wrong. That almost doesn't look like, oh, that just straightened out with a fingernail anyway. Uh, okay, uh, let's turn on the multimeter and we'll check some measurements and see what we've got. So I'm going to plug the charger back in. Ah. Huh. Is it starting? Well, it has to be starting because the fan is spinning. It's on. We've got no backlight, but it is on. Can you guys see that? You guys can't see that. There is a very, very faint Apple logo there. Uh, okay. There you go. There's our Apple logo with me just shining my phone torch in. So, uh, and it has booted to a login screen. Just with no backlight. Uh, okay. Okay. Right, so firstly, we that tells us a lot. That tells us that the board physically works. There's just something that's not quite right here. Um, so I'm going to power that off first and take out the SSD. Then let's take a step back and carry on and do those voltage measurements that I was about to do. Right, okay, we're turning on again. So let's see. PPBus G3 Hot is at 8.6 volts, which we would expect it to be because it's turning on. And presumably we're going to find, yeah, there's 3.42 at PP3V42. So those are correct uh, and the device starts. Um, fine, okay, so why don't we have a green light then? So that could be caused by... Uh, let's unplug it again. Oh, was did we have a backlight just then? Let's plug that in again. We might not have had a backlight because I turned it on while the laptop was closed. Yeah, we've got a backlight as well. I'm just going to wait for that to pop up with the flashing question mark folder because there's no SSD connected. Right, so my next predictions here are we've got something that's blocking the green light on the charger, which is technically inconsequential at the moment because the laptop runs. Um, and most likely... Um, my wager is there's a problem with the battery that might be stopping it from working when the battery is connected. Is that flickering? What's that? 
Yeah, that's the backlight flickering. Oh, that's not good. Okay. The fact that it kind of fades out... Alright, I, I have ideas, I have ideas. <clears throat> um... Uh, right, where was I? So, um, could be a problem with the battery, uh, which is causing it not to power on when the battery is connected. Could be a problem with the keyboard, causing the power button not to work. So, in order to make it power on, we need to disconnect the battery, then plug in the charger so it auto starts. Um, and then also, that backlight issue, um, my guess is possibly a bad DC inboard, which has the um, screen open and closed sensor on it, the Hall Effect sensor, um, which is causing false input. And also a bad DC inboard would also give us um, a bad one-wire circuit, thus giving us no green light on the charger. So let's disassemble a bit further, see what we find. All right, that bridge cable's knackered. So those pins ain't looking too, too clever. Is the connector toast as well. That looks okay, I think that'll clean up. Uh, I'll take out the DC inboard and inspect it. Right, DC inboard looks okay. That's our Hall Effect sensor that I was talking about. Because this is right up at the side where the USB port is and stuff, this guy's a classic for getting corroded to hell. Um, but yeah, this this whole thing looks okay, actually. Um, but again, with a bad ribbon connecting it over to the rest of the laptop, then half of those signals may not be going through properly. Given that we know that this laptop is liquid damaged, we should take the motherboard out and check the other side of it. As we've discovered in recent videos that uh, if you don't bother there could be a whole lot of corrosion on the other side of the board that you didn't spot because you couldn't be bothered to take the board out so make sure you take the board out And other side of the board is okay. A little bit of tie marks down there, including very close to the BIOS chip, but nothing that actually concerns me. Uh, this side of the board is very clean, actually. There's a just enough dust there to make me believe that it hasn't been cleaned. Um, USB port has got a little bit of crud there, but nothing that I think is going to cause a problem. That's a very clean logic board. I've got no problems with that. I'm just going to put it straight back in. Right, I'm going to squirt a little bit of alcohol into that connector and then just dig in there with a toothbrush. Stab it with the bristles just so it clears up those connections. Come on, I can see all of them except one have come good. Um, am I going to jam a blade in there just to see if I can just rub that clean? Let's see if that's actually achieved anything first. I'll clean up this side now as well. I can be a little bit more vicious with this, so I'm going to go in with some glass cleaner instead. Give that a scrub. Uh, I've got very little faith in that, if I'm honest. I'm going to try it again, see if anything has changed. But I have a suspicion that I'm immediately going to go and raid my spares for a replacement cable. I'm 99% certain I've got another one of these lying around somewhere. No, that hasn't changed anything. It still looks very unhappy. Alright, let's try a different bridge cable and see if that improves things. Get the keyboard and trackpad reconnected. 
Found a replacement ribbon I can steal. How about that? What say you now? Aha! Uh -huh. I say green light on the charger. Now a charge light. That's one problem solved. Is that going to fix our unstable backlight? Because if that fixes our unstable backlight, we're basically done. And it probably only needed the replacement bridge cable. That backlight is still all flickery. Mm. And I think it is. Oh, you know what? I think we're good. I saw it go off and on again for a moment, but I think that was just the startup sequence. I'm reassembling. I'm putting the SSD in. We'll even put in the battery and see if that works. Right, so this thing seems to be working just fine now. Um, uh, I don't have the customer's password to do some full testing on it quite yet, but um, as a, at an initial look, the keyboard seems to be working just fine, just through smashing keys and deleting them. Um, caps lock comes on and off correctly as well. Uh, the battery is recognized, um, but I think it's the original battery for the laptop, so that's pretty well worn out. Um, but I can unplug and plug it in, and that comes on and off charge. Again, green light on the charger is responding appropriately. So um, as so far as I can tell, that's all there is to it. So it looks like with this one, it was just as simple as a bad bridge cable. Um, and uh, it's easy to forget about this guy, because the laptop can start with this thing disconnected. So you might think, well, how can that cause any major problems then? But obviously... Um, a disconnected signal line, it might be able to start without, but a signal line that's sending bad signals, that is a bigger problem. And that is what was leading us to get these issues with it um, not detecting the green light properly and uh, not detecting the open-closed status properly. And just for funsies, let's just have a quick look at the schematic just to see if we can identify what those exact pins were and see if they just so happened to relate to the problems we were having. So here's the board view in Flex Board Viewer for the 820-00165 logic board. And if we zoom down on J9500 here, it was these pins around here that were giving us problems. So let's see. We've got Speak Ramp Shutdown L, SMC Lid. That'll be our lid open close detection. We've got HDA reset something about USB, uh, PP3V42, uh, and Sys1 wire, which is our green light on the charger. So look at that. All of the signals that we were having problems just so happened to be on those pins that were messed up. So there it is, everyone. Um, so yeah, this one was actually remarkably simple. Um, that's all I've got for you today then. So thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye for now.